Hi everybody, this is David from Newton Girls Who Code. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use PyCharm together with GitHub. I'll use PyCharm to write and run the code, and I'll use GitHub to store it so that I can see it from any computer I happen to be at and continue to my developing from there. GitHub also lets me share my code with other people. So specifically, we'll talk about downloading a GitHub repository into a PyCharm project, I'll show you how to create a new program within that project. I'll show you how to push the new code that you've written back up into GitHub. And then I'll show you how to edit an existing program within the repository and push that code back into GitHub as well. Finally, we'll visit the GitHub webpage and see what the project looks like on their webpage. So here we go. I'll start by launching PyCharm. And this time when it comes up, instead of opening a project I've created locally, I'm going to use this checkout from version control. And since I've put my code in GitHub, that's the one I'm going to select. So the first thing it wants to know is, what will it use as my login credentials? I'm not sure if you try to use this without logging in, if you can download things, but I have an account, so I'll use that. So my account is david at newtongirlswhocode.org. And I won't tell you my password. Let's see if I can remember it successfully. I might have. It's asking me for a, a master password. I'm not sure what that's about, so I'll just hit cancel. And it says, OK, which repository would you like? I'm a fairly active GitHub user, so I have a bunch of choices. And I'm going to use this one for my 2016 Tuesday Night Club at Girls Who Code. So I'll choose that git repository. Funny word, git. I'm not sure why it's called git and github, but I'll choose this one. And just for fun, I'll test that my connection is working. And it says, yes, it is. So I'm good to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone the repository. And what that does is it downloads the code from that repository on github to this directory on my local machine. I'm making a copy, and that's OK. So I've made my copy, and now I see this PyCharm project. Let's see what's inside it. Aha, lots of stuff. So one of these things is a directory that I've made for myself, or I could put the code right up here at the top. You know what, let's just do that. Let's put the code right at the top. So I will click on that with a Control key, again, Control click, and that gives me the new and Python file. By the way, I could also do this by going up to the file menu and saying new, and it again will give me the choice. So I'll say new Python file, and I'll make a program called colors. So I'll make colors.py, and here it is. Uh, oh, it doesn't show up yet. First asks me, do you want me to follow this to Git? Have Git pay attention to this? And my answer is yes, that's the point of this exercise. Uh, that's an interesting thing. I'll ignore this requirement. So here we go, colors.py, I will write uh, colors equals, and I'll put a list of colors that I like, red, yellow, green, I need quotes for that, and blue, and then I'll say for, uh, let's see, I'll say i equals zero, and then I'll say while i is less than len of colors. So I'm going to go through each color. And I will say print when i was percent %d, my favorite color was percent %s. And these percents are placeholders. And now I'll say what to put in there. I'll put in i for my age and colors of i my favorite color. You might notice that it's giving me some suggestions and sort of auto-completing what I type. That's just a nice benefit of PyCharm EDU. So I think this program should work. Let's give it a try. So I'll hit run and it says, oh my goodness, and makes a lot of mess. Too much output to process. So I hit the stop key. Can anybody see what bug I made in this code? I intended to go through each of the colors one at a time and instead I just left I always at zero. So I left out an i equals i plus 1 statement. Let me add that and see what happens. 
Sure enough, when I was zero, my favorite color was red. When I was one, my favorite color was yellow, and so on with green and blue. So now I've got my program, and I want to push it up to GitHub. And so here's the new thing we're going to introduce, this tab here that says version control. I think if you go up here to the view tool windows, you can also get version control from here. So I'll get it from here, and it says there are three unversioned file and one local change default file. If I open that up, sure enough, it has colors.py. That's the new thing I made inside this repository. So I'm going to go here, and with my control key down, I'm going to click default. And you can see that it gives me some choices, and one of them is commit changes. That's the one I'm going to use just for fun. I think if I go over here to this uh, VCS version control system, I can also use that to commit changes. Either way, it gives me this pop-up screen, and it says, do you want me to commit colors.py and modify this directory? And the answer is yes, I do. So I'll say creates new color talking program. Doesn't really talk, but whatnot. And now we've got this commit button. But I'm not just going to press commit. Commit, as it turns out, says, I want to snapshot this program right here on my machine, but not push it up. What I actually want is to push my code out to the world, out to GitHub. So I'll click Commit and Push, and it says it doesn't know who I am. So I will tell it again who I am, david at newtongwc.org. And my email, hmm, I wonder what the difference between these two is. I'll just put the same thing for both. So I will click Set and Commit. Let's not set these globally. That might be awkward. And it says, here's a bunch of other files you might have wanted to commit. And I really don't. None of these were things I cared about. These are things that were made by the PyCharm itself. So I'll say, no, don't commit any of those. And in case I do some more committing in the future, I'll ask it to remember that. So here we go. It's about to push, and it says, are you sure this is what you want? My answer is yes, indeed. I'll expand this so you can see what it's doing. It says it's going to uh, push this file, colors.py, within this project. So it's going to push it up, so I'll say yes. And it should be working, and there it is, push successful. So this worked successfully. I'm going to make another change before I end this video, and that's to change an existing program. So I have here in my mini projects some other things I've done. Let's take a look, for example, at uh, what do I like? Maybe I'll look at names. This was a program that I wrote before. Do you remember with the comment print out the greeting 10 times? This one I'll change. I'll say, you know what, I'm going to make this 20 times and change this to 2 for 20, and I will print, and sure enough, this now should work. So I say David, and it does it. 20 times, lovely. But what I care about again is sending this up to the world. So I'll click on my version control window, and again it says this is the default set of changes. Now it's changing it in mini projects, and it's names.py that's changed. Sure enough, that's what I would like to change. So I will click on this version control system commit changes. It says you want to commit names.py. It remembers that old comment, which is not what I want. Here's my new comment. Um, echoes the name 20 times, not 10. And again, I'll go to commit, but instead of pushing the button directly, pressing the button directly, I'll use this little up and down thing to expose the commit and push. That's what I want to do. And I will push. And push was successful.